Hello, my name is Noha Imara. I am a foreign language teacher assistant, um, a alumna, and uh, today I'm going to talk about the socioculture insight um, and about my experience in general in the US. Uh, so the FLTA, uh, word abbreviation here, it, uh, it indicates the uh, full, uh, full, Fulbright foreign language teacher assistant. So uh, in this program, you teach your own uh, uh, language, your own native language, and in this case, it's Arabic. So I have uh, my students here from Brown University and University of Kentucky. And uh, I'm going to start with the University of uh, Wisconsin, uh, which is in the north uh, by the borders of uh, Canada. Okay. So here's Wisconsin, and um, the thing that I want to say that the North has a lot of commonalities that I'm going to discuss today, which is totally different from the West, totally different from the East Coast, and from the Midwest, West, and South America. Okay. Of course, it's really cool. So from my experience, I got uh, some, um, I would say, uh, insights or conclusions, and I put them in 101 rules for those who are going to the US in any program in general. So the first 101 rule is the culture awareness. Before you go, it's very important that you, you are culturally aware of what kind of society you're going to uh, be exposed to. So for example, it's, it's very diverse. You're going to meet people from different uh, religious, social, and uh, sexual orientations. Um, and you have to get ready to ex an exposure of an international hotspot, or let's say crucible, of, of different international cultures. And the cultural sensitivity, it's a very big issue there, that for example, you have to take care of everything, almost everything you say. So for example, here in Egypt, I would keep talking freely, I mean, uh, without really taking care of the sensitive issues like the race issues or the ethnicity issues or um, things that are very uh, sensitive to American people. So um, it's very important to take care of everything you say there and don't misinterpret what they say. For example, they would uh, um, speak out of what they want directly in a straightforward way. So for example, if they don't like something, they would say no directly. Do not misinterpret that. Students are used to it. So they wouldn't, for example, um, try to waste time on something that they are not convinced with. So yeah, um, patience, honesty, and the straightforwardness are common features among the American people. So for example, if you are um, in a place like Wisconsin, where there is a beauty of nature, people are quite few there, and life is very um, comfortable to everyone, um, it's, it's, it's very hard to find people that are not impatient, that are impatient, like here in Cairo, for example. It's a totally different uh, society. Oh, here I was a stage manager in one of the most candid um, annual performances about women rights. Um, so yeah, that was a theatrical performance. So the two pictures here on the left are from Wisconsin, from the north. It's very quiet, people are very patient, as I said. Here it's in Los Angeles where people are totally different. Not totally different, but they don't share the same values with the North. The North maybe can, can be like, um, for example, uh, more conservative, I would say, than um, a place like Los Angeles, Santa Barbara, or Seattle. And they do have religious people there, they are, they are conservative. Not everybody there is, is liberal. So I had this stereotype 
a stereotypical image that everybody's liberal there, maybe, but, but I found out that they are not like what I have uh, thought. Families are more united. Even if um, their kids like, um, are independent, they get independent at, at a very young age, they start working and to pay for their uh, college tuition, but still families are very united. And um, in the northern states, I noticed that they are not very, I would say, culturally aware. They don't speak many languages. It was kind of a monolingual pla place. However, they, they, they really respected the idea of diversity and having a, pe a person from the Middle East, for example. Students are quite different. They are a bit shy. They respect the idea of, of um, having classroom rules. And they respect the timing of the classroom and the limited power distance. So for example, I met, this is my supervisor. He, um, he taught me how, how real supervisors are. So um, the first time I came, He's the one who waited for me in the airport. He didn't send anybody at all from the staff or from the, um, like, uh, the secretary or whatever. He came by himself. He bought me a lot of groceries at the, at the first day. And he carried all the bags that I have, though that I, uh, though that I heard afterwards that he is having a problem with his shoulders. He had a surgery in his shoulders before. I never saw something like this in Egypt. Okay, <laughs> so they do have a limited power distance. They would speak out with their point of views uh, to everyone. And of course, self-expression. Okay, adapt, adapt, adapt. So for example, here I am with, with my friends uh, in the first picture. It took me some time to have my own friends who, who are really close to me. It took me some time to have my own, I would say, community that I feel comfortable with. And this is uh, um, the Russian FLTA at the uh, university there. Um, we traveled together by train. We made a train trip from Chicago till Seattle, Washington, on the other side of the US by train. It took us three days and then to Los Angeles, to Las Vegas, and then way back. So this is what is uh, supposed to happen, that you adapt as much as you can. And here I, I learned how to do the lighting for uh, theatrical performances. Another thing that is very important is that you have to learn how to cook Egyptian dishes to your colleagues, to your students. It's part of the culture. So it's very important from my perspective.